Sweating and, and, and really crying and, and <laughs> no, we had lots of fun coming together to work on the topic of uh, IT technologies, networking in context of sharing and collaboration. So last previous three days, from May 2nd to 4th, we participated in Wisherfest, first Wisherfest, and then we have now first Wisher Labs camp. And uh, many different projects participated. Can I have next slide, please? So, people from quite a few projects participate, to mention a few. We had some pro people from, uh, who offer global services, which at this moment work as a kind of silos. So they're a bit isolated, not interoperating. Because their intention was to work on service interoperability, and that all those different services start becoming like an interoperable network rather than isolated silos. So, for example, those projects offer services to people, like sharing services and staff and writers and meals and accommodations, hitchhiking and sharing food. So they're all interesting projects, but again, at this moment, it's pretty much nothing connecting them. And they're focused to build communities around services they offer. If I can have another slide. Also people uh, participated who who participate in communities, so it's not sharing service, it's like certain communities, worldwide communities. And they also use sharing platforms, but often have something in common that they share an interest, a background, a, a collaboration, a passion. So you've seen those few networks like Make Sense, We Share, Ed Riders, Let's Do It World. But also we were looking how how we can empower other existing networks. And you can see a few other examples, like Transition Town Network, Open Knowledge Foundation Network. So to point at this distinction, if you look at the previous slide, once more, can I have the previous slide? Previous. Ah, previous. 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 previous, yeah. Previous. So those, those services, those networks build community around the service. If you go to the next slide, the those are built of, about, around common interest, common work, but don't at this moment offer different services to the community. So if I can have next slide. Also people participated with those three projects who aim how to empower communities by offering technology so those communities can run the services. For example, Share Tribe allows people to start a tribe and start within existing community to share resources, services, and so on. Similar Community Forge, which also offers like a local currency, alternative currency system, accounting system, and community tools, which also enables communities with maps, the, the communication boards, wikis, and so on. So this take approach that see existing community and just offer services that people who already know each other can, can share more. If I can have another slide. And what really I find very exciting that during this event, uh, people from those five projects have participated. And all those projects work with new way of, of networking. A networking where people have control over the information, their profiles, they, their offers and requests at some point. So we go away from this Web 2.0, like I would say this centralized service technology, and move in direction where we have more modular, open web environment where there are different services like data services, apps, uh, uh, hubs like uh, messaging hub services. 
and we can have like more granular pieces to build networking experience. But again, those five pioneering in my services were represented during this camp. But still, even between them, there's some there is not full full interoperability. So they experiment with different approaches, but still don't connect so well. Maybe some of them, but some of them don't connect so well. So if I can have a next slide. Oh, also we are like looking at the apps aspect, that different services work on the different apps. And uh, this one I put here because Joseph like had this uh, challenge that he wanted to start a crowdfunding platform. And at this moment, it doesn't come so easy to start a platform. And we also were looking a bit how to make it like a drag and drop. That if you have a network and if you want to start a service, you just take and drag and drop a new service to your network services and it should be, it could be, we can make it so easy. So it's not like a big effort of, of installing a new service, you can make it like a drag and drop experience. And also we're looking at that different uh, crowdfunding platforms for software, to develop software. And if I can have the next slide, again, we also had some representation from people offering services in a more like a per function way. So for example, Trust Tribe focus on a reputation that doesn't uh, live within a silo of a, of a service, but you have it more personal and you can connect your reputation across services. Doing the first there were people from other services like Credport and there are a few other ones. This one actually works with a, like a search engine for writers, but you can find the writers across different services at this moment. This one is like working with a, how to deal with terms of service. So nowadays, most of the time, you see terms of service, you say yes, I accept, but most people don't read it. So often we accept something we don't read, and certain statistics say that we would have to spend like few weeks a year just reading terms of service we accept, which no one will physically do. So they try to also address the issue to make it more approachable, especially if you use more and more services that we are not just lying by saying, oh, yes, we accept terms we haven't read. So when we have more diversity of services, we also have this kind of challenges. And here you can see a few other projects, in some of them in more experimental state, stage, you're dealing with things and items and, and like uh, material things. And also some references where you can read up some, some more information. And the next slide. So what we found as a kind of interesting common aspect for all those projects that they all existed on the web, on the World Wide Web. And uh, here you can see illustration of a linked open data cloud. And what people have been working on for quite some while people like uh, associated with World Wide Web, web Consortium and other bigger projects in academia, how to use web in a way that the knowledge becomes like a link graph of knowledge, that we don't speak like all kind of different languages and we have those islands which have no connection, that I actually we have the knowledge expressed in a way that, that it connects and it, it interoperates. So you see that at this point it still looks centralized with the Wikipedia, like one of the biggest resources, we can see there are lots of autonomous uh, data spaces, knowledge spaces, but they already link to each other and you can discover relevant other resources by just uh, like, uh, going through them. So we also have a nice opportunity that few people had experienced, including uh, Henry Story, like long experience with working with link data and semantic web. So we also were exploring how to use those technologies and you will see one example well, when we started incorporating linked data technologies into a sharing service environment. And here I will give it to Helen, who will express you more of a bigger picture. Yeah. Next time, please. Yeah, so we are trying here, and we don't see the top part of the slide, but how to achieve connected shareability. Uh, what we, we all want to do is, and what we have, is context, intentions, and objects to share. And uh, what uh, we do right now is go through uh, portals or providers or uh, websites in order to find what we're looking for and to offer what we have to offer. But from a user perspective, what we want to be able to do is to discover what it is what, that we need to, 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 to achieve uh, our projects and uh, uh, put our intentions to work. 
uh, in the multiple contexts that we're in and if we have things to offer we want to be able uh, to put them available for others and we want to have others um, uh, be able to find it and this is in theory and a priori independent from any uh, specific uh, provider or uh, website so uh, we've tried and looked what was uh, yeah what was uh, oh can we okay we tried and look from a user perspective and then what happens uh, within the black box and the machine uh, what it implied in terms of uh, architecture, uh, trying to see how we could start designing the web uh, 3.0. So, um, starting from I share what I have to share, uh, context, intentions, objects, um, and then going into how I specify my intentions, my context, and my objects, how can we uh, describe uh, what we need to share uh, in a way that is interoperable and in a way where we can actually discover and find each other and this supposes that we uh, crack the semantic technology and ontology uh, code uh, in order to get these expressed intentions into a form that they will be uh, recognized uh, within the system. So that's the first uh, thing that we will be concentrating on. And once the objects uh, are described, described, they would be published on, on uh, linked profiles uh, which are uh, each individual can own and transfer um, and transport uh, on the web. And from there, uh, offers and requests can be aggregated uh, either through peer-to-peer -peer friends of friends networks or via hubs which are all the silos that we have seen before but that we would try to make uh, more interoperable because um, they will work to share and maintain the ontologies or all the semantic tools that we will have um, made available or that uh, will have uh, been uh, uh, organized uh, so that the either emergent structures from uh, friends of friends or peer-to-peer -peer networks or the constructed ones via hubs uh, can start to uh, collectively curate uh, the semantic tools that will be able to create these bridges between the intentions and the context and the way they will be described via linked profiles uh, on the web. And we will be applying this to a use case which is the next We Share Labs Come Camp uh, 2. Uh, and uh, this was kind of abstract and conceptual, but now we will get into the practicalities of all this. Uh, are you? So next time, we work together. Yeah, James. So. So also to to have it more focused, we thought let's do something that we will actually do ourselves. So not just talk about something and develop technologies as a sort of artistic form of expression, but also thinking, okay, what technologies we can build to actually put in practice ourselves. And we said, if we just organize this camp, we just have direct experience of different challenges and requirements to organize it. We thought we would definitely like to have another camp together. And what we can do to leverage the sharing and collaboration toolbox to design another camp. So we will try now to focus on how we can develop tools that we will use for making the next camp and then test them ourselves as we go. So next time, please. And here are some examples of, of what we will need for, for the next camp. Equipment, uh, internet connection, some collaboration spaces, places for lodging, accommodation, food, uh, I don't know, is that entertainment? I, I <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
like uh, find writers or ways to get to the place where we meet for the next time. We need to have accommodations to sleep, we need to have collaboration spaces and things to, to eat, like share meals. So that would be like few few common examples that we can work on to, to be the toolbox to using new technologies, organize the next event. And here we have an example from the Wisher Fest. That for the Wisher Fest we started a, a, a small platform to share, that we can have dedicated sharing platform just for the fest for the participants to, to use. But I, I don't see like so many people using it and one of the, the challenges I, I find that everyone needs to go and, and create an account and also create the new listings. So for example people living in Paris who may already offer their couches, offer different services, couldn't just go and say yes, I'm that it's me and, and you can find my couch offer over there. Because they need to type by hand and fill up the form which I think discourage people. So we would like to also address this, this challenge that those offers and requests are not portable. It's hard to offer things across many services nowadays. And also it's hard to start a dedicated service which will just aggregate offers of people who want to participate in the event and share with other participants. So if I can have my... So that's kind of the, the situation as of nowadays. We have different services running like all communities where you go and you usually fill up the form and create a profile. And then in this profile you can say, oh, I offer couches, and then if you want to use three services, you need to go to three places, create three profiles, and three times stay the same. Oh, I want to offer a couch. So if I can see the next slide, we're working on simple example to implement the code to change it, that we can publish our profile in our like, personal cloud, personal data space, and then just tell the services, hey, you can find my profile there. And also, if you go to the next slide, on this profile you can say my current location, my preferences, like if I smoke or don't smoke for ride sharing or accommodation. Maybe one back, one back. One more back, maybe. And also what I found very important, the location part. Because, for example, myself, I change my location every two, three weeks. So if I use a service where I need to give my location, and I use 20 of those services, I will not go every two weeks to 20 services and update 20 accounts saying, oh, I just moved from Paris to Barcelona. And then three weeks later, oh, now I stay in Lisbon. By the way, I will need to go and spend half a day updating services. So I think it's a very, very significant feature to don't have this overhead. So people say, people get network fatigue if we don't design interfaces to make it simple to, to use. And if you see next slide, also once we have these autonomous profiles, post it wherever we feel comfortable with, they can link to our list of offers and requests. So if I offer a couch, for example, I can later to different services say, yes, you can find my profile here, and my offer is there. So if someone looks for a couch over this service, over this hub, you can find a couch over there. And the last slide, I believe, yeah, that's the next one. So, that's uh, an example of uh, the user interface for the sharing platform um, that we call Connected uh, Shareability. Um, so, if we're talking about the um, WeShare uh, Labs uh, project, this is a really simple user interface for anybody to build their own profile. So some people might not know how to do those previous steps where they need to uh, produce their own web ID profile that publishes all of those uh, requests and offers, things they need and, and things they uh, things they need and things they can offer. So um, this is a simple way for somebody to build that profile as the first step in the process. Um, so we can see that somebody says. Uh, they're coming to uh, WeShare Labs, um, they're going to need to eat, so they're saying they want to eat lentils, and the, uh, the labs might be in Paris, so they say they're coming to Paris. Um, also, somebody else has previously signed up, and everybody um, publishes this data through a unique URI. So, I know Helen's unique URI, so I'm putting a, a relationship in here, um, to say uh, Helen is my friend. So that helps me discover stuff uh, through the network. Um, 
A couple of other important bits on here. Um, the uh, this uh, URL in the in the bar up there, just off the top, um, that becomes a URI that you could load into any other service to use uh, to use the service hosted here as a sharing application. So we don't want to centralise anything. Um, we want to make services that distribute this information. So uh, this just becomes a point that you can discover uh, all the services that happen to be available or things that other people need um, at, at WeShare Labs. Um, down the bottom, this might give you your own uh, URI for your, uh, your offers and your requests. So if you don't know how to um, run a web server or build your own uh, RDF web ID. Uh, this really simple interface gives you your own URI straight away that you can start sharing with other people. So in that first stage, you, you enter some uh, uh, requirements that you have and maybe you enter some offers as well. Um, and then in the next step, now we're starting to be able to aggregate uh, all of those uh, requirements and all of those offers. So from the information that you, you enter, um, we try and understand the context uh, of, uh, of what your requests are. So um, the user put that they uh, want to eat lentils and they want to travel uh, to Paris. So ultimately we're trying to connect the user um, with services and we want to understand the context of their request. So from lentils we know they're in a food context so we can start to connect them with food providers um, from WeShare Labs. Uh, we also know they're kind of in a travel context so we can start to connect them with uh, travel providers um, who are associated with WeShare Labs as well. So now the user can see this information um, presented. This is all the other people who are offering things as part of WeShare Labs, aggregated into uh, a single view. Um, and then the user might click on, on one of these. Uh, so a food provider. Um, and now they've been able to enter their requirement and actually connect with somebody who has what they want. So now this is the information about somebody called Mealshare um, and the properties of what they're offering. Um, so now we can see that uh, they're offering things that, that we're interested in. We can see uh, the URL for their profile and ways to contact them. <coughs> Yes, so now actually we have a little demo where Anki implemented in a shared tribe an open source platform that we use for the fest. This possibility, this very basic feature of importing a profile. So if you already have a profile somewhere, you don't have to fill up another form. You just says, I have my profile there, just go fetch the information. So maybe I'll call the laptop for you so you can... Yeah, maybe move a little bit. Picture comes back. Yeah, so something that we did. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, practically during the during the camp, just to take uh, like a uh, first uh, concrete steps. Uh, in order to get start building of the interoperability. Uh, Sorry, French. keyboard. French. Okay. Mm. Okay, I can demo with any computer that is online, but it's a bit lower, slower. <laughs> So there is uh, like um, 
as mentioned in, uh, in Share Tribe, you can start uh, local communities for sharing, and uh, we started one for VShare Labs, like a testing testing grounds. Uh, and currently, if you want to come here and create a new account, say this could be could could be the sharing site also for the for the event that is upcoming. And as Pavlik said, there might be this net fatigue of not willing to uh, fill in another another profile with uh, a lot of. Uh, a lot of information to fill that you already have filled in many places. So if you have your profile uh, hosted in one place and you know the URL, in normal case you could just copy paste it from there. Uh, now I'll uh, write it here. If I find correct characters, yes. And uh, I hope that in, in uh, more in the future you don't need to might so much about the URLs, but now it gives the freedom that you can host things anywhere you want. Okay, so you fill in the URL, appointing the service that, okay, I'm coming to a new service, I already have my profile online, now it only has the name and email and basic information, but in the future, as shown, there could be your couch offer, meal preferences, uh, anything like that, that could be immediately fetched here. And uh, let's close it down, click the pre-filled form. So also might be changing a lot, but now it's uh, just showing the idea. And uh, we get fetched from the URL that I give, uh, the username, given name, uh, email address, and stuff like that. And we can also store the URL. So the use case, as public said, that if you change something in your central profile, it will be updated to the services. So if you get a new item, like a new charger, and you can borrow that, you can add that in your main profile, and that shows in all the context where you want it to show. So this will reduce, reduce the amount of effort needed and on the other hand, then it will bring more of, of uh, the available resources visible to more users. So hopefully boost a lot the sharing that is happening. You can open the, the browser directly, the, the URL where it was profile, just to show if it can open. Yeah. You can try. Let's see what happens. Well, as you see, ta -da. Okay. Yeah, so now it will show the uh, like uh, contents of the of the profile so far, so it looks a bit technical. But basically, you find here the name, first name, last name, uh, link to my profile image, so we could fetch that also. And this can be extended to contain really a lot of information. And there can be links. Like the picture is not actually here, but there is the URL address where to fetch the picture. And if that would be offering there, uh, for example. Uh, my skills of cooking like Indian food or something specific, it could be linked to like my food food cooking skills or something and that could be hosted in me sharing or supper. And my the main profile would just have a link there. And then if I'm going to a new platform where they can show my cooking preferences, they could fetch that information hosted there. So the practical thing would what started now was importing this information when it comes to new service. And then the next step would be to make it also possible to export again. So if you come to new event, write your stuff there, uh, then you can later on point to that, that place or link that to all of your assets so that you don't need to rewrite those things. It's in the first tab, the presentation. This is, uh, what you can't read there is uh, the evolution <laughs> of apps. So where are we now and where do we want to get to? So this is really when you think of apps, think of um, web apps, think of websites, think of anything where a user is connecting to a service. So we've got free with share tribe, meal sharing, community tools, these are all services. And their users connect in directly into these services. And they don't, the users don't move out of these services. So if, for example, someone offers a lift or a ride on freewheelers and there's a, 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 shared, a shared tribe user that wants, as a passenger, that wants to go on this lift, there's no connection between these two services. So 
there is no way that um, the, that 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 trade can be fulfilled. So this is essentially the problem we have now, and this is the kind of technology we're looking at in the previous uh, presentations to try and fulfill these needs. So the next slide. So what we're doing with all this interoperable technology and removable data is allowing service providers to connect to each other so that users can connect to each other via the service providers using these, these um, uh, basically languages, these protocols to allow, established protocols to allow um, service providers to connect to each other and exchange information about offers and requests needs and uh, likes and services offered. Um, the next one shows basically a world where we can connect user to user directly and also user to service provider through to serve other service providers. So this is a very peer-to-peer -peer type world. But peer-to-peer -peer doesn't mean that we don't have service, service providers offering an interface. So with all of these in all of these um, scenarios, we need an interface of some sort, whether that's a website, whether that's a, a mobile application, and all these, these websites and mobile applications have to talk a protocol that is commonly understood. And that's really the, the hard bit about all of this. How do we get all of these service providers to come together? And so what we're doing with uh, the, the camp number two is offering kind of a, a holistic way, a kind of a goal to say if we can work towards actually creating a, an event that can galvanize industries so we can get say five or ten lift sharing, ride sharing organizations, five or ten couch surfing organizations to come together and exchange pro using protocols so we can grow the marketplace because that's what this is all about. So essentially um, the aims of, the, of, of this the, the, the kind of the camps project is to achieve interoperability be between different communities and different community platforms to make it easier for distributed coordination of collaboratively produced events and also that something that's really important here is we're, we're proving we're proving this industry we're proving this marketplace so so feedback and evaluation and metrics about how how much did we share, how much did we collaborate, is really important. And we should build this into the protocols that we create so that we can measure how successful we are in, in all these different aspects. Because if I may add here that here we have this mixed scenario that people can do friend-to-friend -friend networking. So if it's it's me, and I look for a couch in Paris. I can send, check with all my friends if any of them offers couch in, car, in Paris without sending an email, just have a semantic way of expressing, hey, if you, if you offer couch in Paris, I can ask all my friends kind of directly, just a, a net, you know, app can do that to check with all my friends automatically if they offer a couch. Or if I don't know anyone in Paris, I can check with like more common hubs. So now people use like Couchsurfing, Be Welcome, Hospitality Exchange, and so on, like more generic hubs. So then if they also use common way for, of expressing that, I can say check with those three big common service hubs if maybe some of them knows the couch. So you can network between your friends directly, or you can go through a hub. So you have like more ways of exploring and, and discovering information while we have this more connected environment. And these hubs are basically engineered optimization, so they, they hold indexes of um, offers and requests. And actually, in this environment, many, many more people can set up indexes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to collect all of the people wanting to stay in Paris together, so that if anyone wants to come to Paris, then um, they come to me first, and then they can go off and, and, and verify that these are real, real offers or requests. But Index is going to become very important in this hybrid world where we, we're not pure peer-to-peer -peer and we're not pure monolithic centralized services, but we, we can flow in between. Okay, so for the next labs camp, if someone looks for a couch, can that, and we already have the system in place to experiment with it, you can check with all your friends in a place where the uh, event happens, 
You can check generic hubs, like we welcome cloud surfing, whatever hospitality exchange systems that want to interoperate. And also we can spin a small hub like we just did for the Wisher Fest for the camp itself. So you right. have like all different places where you can try finding a couch that you look for, not just you know those different silos as at this moment. And yep, that's one of the goals. Ruby. <coughs> and that's a picture of people sharing food. <laughs> You have a question. Good work. What are the next steps? I have one request. Can we keep the name and branding of the use case even more open, neutral? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I believe so. What would you propose? Just it's it's just an example. So to keep us focused, but it's just a uh, generic software. So if we if we use Wisher Labs camp, it can be any camp, any event. So again, it all will. We at this, at this me or other people I hope here will work on open source technologies, open protocols, so everyone can implement it, use it, install it, and also to to mention this ease of installing. So, as I was saying before, nowadays, like for example, Joseph wants to start a crowdfunding platform, and I don't think he succeeded because it's like a big, big technological challenge. And at some point we can make it like this drag and drop interfaces that once, if you want to in your community start a hub or sharing something, just say add to our community group a sharing hub or, or something like a, a wiki or, or, or crowdfunding platform or whatever service you want to add. But similar as a person using, interacting with those services, nowadays you have a coupling between the service and the interface it offers. So if you use three different car sharing services, we pretty much have to use three different interfaces. But at some point, if we have this more distinction between the data and the interfaces, one can have one's own favorite ride sharing app, just like email apps. Different people prefer different email apps, so you at some point you can also have your favorite uh, ride sharing app and it will connect to the data from all the different services that you are not tied to this certain interface. You can use your favorite interface and still interact with the whole network. I think that's not the I answer think to one the issue that's really important here is that this is the model of the internet. This is the model of the web. You can use any mail client to, to send and receive mail from anyone in the world. You can use any web browser to, to view any web page anywhere in the world. And that's because of standards. That's because of protocols and established ways of doing things and, and, and understanding similar languages. So these, these are methods that really underline the way that the web works and why we have a successful internet. And to answer the question, agnostic, I really hope not only Gusher Labs comes, but like Sense comes, Edge comes, bar camps, whatever, everyone can use this kind of technology. So again, we just, because that was a labs camp, we share labs camp, we say we make another one and we can already like pre-decide here that we want to do it. But again, I'm willing to participate about any kind of camp. So it's not like wisher specific or something. It's like, uh, that's because at this moment we do it as a part of the wisher labs camp, which use it as an example, but it's very agnostic in general. <laughs> Uh, yes, so I think we can. I think so too. Finish.